Hello everybody, this is Josh Blazer from GameWisdom.com. Welcome to a very special edition of the Perceptive Podcast here on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. As a strange situation, this is actually not Friday. We are posting a cast on Monday as sort of a way to test and tease the idea of having a double cast each week. Normally we talk about the Patreon stuff at the end of the cast, but because this is a special circumstance, we're going to do that at the start. As many of you know, we are running a Patreon campaign in order to support Game Wisdom, get the monthly funding that we need in order to keep going. I know I talk about this at the end of every cast, it's mentioned at all the end of the videos, but just want to talk a little bit about the situation and sort of use this as a way to raise awareness. As you know, we've been doing Game Wisdom for go actually going past three years now. James recently joined a few months ago. And in all this time, the site literally has not been bringing in the money that it needs to be. That's been the whole point of the Patreon campaign and just trying to raise everything up with YouTube and Twitch and etc. As we're recording this right now, site's still not bringing in what I need a month in order to basically support myself financially and my household. So... That's been the greater push for the Patreon side of things over these last few months. We've gotten a few more donations. It's also been why I've added in more goals and more rewards for people, including the podcast shoutouts, the digital CDs, and of course the videos for people who donate at least $30 or more. The goals, as I have posted on the Patreon are pretty big deals for the site and for myself. They will, if we can hit at least the first goal, that will be enough that I can at least uh, basically take care of my monthly expenses and have a little bit extra in order to keep supporting myself. And that will also allow me to bring back the developer roundtable cast. Goal number two, it will let us do more Twitch streaming. And then the big goal, which I believe is the 1800 or so goal, that's the one that I will not only be able to support myself, but I can actually start adding in more of these casts and hopefully start paying for content and stuff like that. So with the this special Monday cast, like I said, if we can hit that third goal, you can look for more casts like these coming in the future. So uh, it's not just me on tonight. Let's welcome back James. So James, I guess it's been a while. We haven't really had like a chance to just talk just the two of us. How are you finding things like working with me and doing the game wisdom stuff? Uh, well, it's actually been a really great uh, eye-opening uh, uh, adventure so far, especially meeting a lot of the uh, uh, different just just different people in the mm -hmm. gaming industry from uh, uh, the young, the young and up and coming to uh, the uh, old guys who have been in it for. Uh, <laughs> Uh, far too long and and still loving it uh, and, and uh, people from around the world uh, it's it, it really is eye-opening to uh, it's it, it's a world beyond just the controller so yeah and that is pretty much one of the goals of game wisdom I think one of the things that has helped achieve at least the measure of popularity we've had so far is the fact that again these are discussions that you re you really don't hear around the game industry and around game development. Um, the cast that you've had a chance to sit on with other developers, I mean, you've heard how excited they are to talk about design and talk about their work because it's not something that generally comes up in normal conversation. Yeah, very, very, very true. And uh, it's also, I feel like uh, Game Wisdom is one of the few, few uh, shows out there that really gives these developers not just a voice, but... Uh, uh, a full on persona, you know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like a lot of, uh, other places where it's like, Oh, this is uh, the developer themselves are tied. So, so much to their game that that almost becomes who they are. Mm -hmm. And people, people look at the, them from that point of view, as opposed to, um, who they are as a person and why they got into the industry in the first place and what they think about this, about this kind of stuff. And it, you know, I, and I, I definitely, I, you leave this as a shout out to all developers out there. Uh, come on the show. We recognize you for who you are, not just for the games you make. Yeah. And that's one of the things like I've been also seeing like when I've been doing my research on Twitch and YouTube and seeing like popular 
YouTubers and Twitch streamers, when they play video games, it's, again, just strictly from, like, the enthusiast fan point of view. And you don't really get that critical insight that I think what we've touched on and what we talk about with developers whenever we have them on the cast or when I put up my videos in live plays. Yeah, very true. Very true. Yeah. And as James said, we are always looking for new guests. As always, send me an email, josh at game-wisdom.com. Submissions one on the front page. We're always loving to talk to you. And if we can get that funding, at least for goal number three, it will allow us to do more Monday casts. Now, for this special teaser, we're going to be spending it a little bit light. We're going to talk about one topic. But, again, if things pick up enough, we get enough guests, we could turn these Monday casts into basically second interviews or second discussions. And, like I always say, any donations are greatly appreciated, whether it's a penny or $100. Every amount can help raise awareness, raise the funding that we can get. And, again, the more we get, the more we can put back into the site and make things better for everyone all around. So... Um, let's begin, our, I guess, our special Monday cast then. And the topic we're talking about is going to be another game that has made the transition from retail to free-to-play. And this is a topic that James was really interested in talking about last week, and that is Evolve. So, for those of you who missed it, Evolve, of course, was developed by Turtle Rock, let's see, Turtle Rock Studios. They are, of course, the makers behind one of my favorite games, Left 4 Dead which was a asymmetrical co-op game that really, I think it was like one of their first games, if not their first game, and took them into the limelight very quickly. In fact, Valve, I think, bought out the Left 4 Dead rights, and then Valve sort of designed Left 4 Dead 2. Now, after that release, my memory is a bit fuzzy, but I'm not sure if they parted ways from Valve on amicable terms or not. Did you hear anything about that on your end, James? Uh, th- as far as uh, the departure from Valve, that that I'm not completely sure about. I, I don't know how how all that went down exactly. Okay. Now you did play Evolve, like the retail version, right? Yes, I, I bought I bought Evolve the retail version. I want to say full price, actually. Okay. Yeah. So when Evolve was pitched, it was going to be basically their original IP, Tarawak was going to do this all themselves, they got 2K Games to help publish it, and it was going to basically be the start of a brand new franchise. And the months leading up to Evolve, there was a lot of buzz. The game was going for, again, a completely unique multiplayer experience with asymmetrical 4v1 play, which hasn't really been done before. But then as it got closer to launch and then the launch itself, a lot of little things started to pop up that became big problems. The first being their very aggressive DLC plan. I know they pitch and they promote a lot of downloadable content, not just like skins and whatnot, but new characters, new monsters, etc., etc. And I have heard issues of balance, but... I didn't play the game during the retail stage, so I'm going to turn it over to James for this part. So, during your time spent playing it, how did you find the game? Uh, okay, so dur- when you first start up the game, if you, uh, y- you go through this brief, you're going through like a brief tutorial segment where you get to play as the monster, and it's re- really enjoyable, it basically, you know... This is how you do this. This is how you do that. Basic tutorial stuff. Uh, and th- then it goes, uh, you go straight into the, you know, the starting menus uh, and log- logging on. Uh, let's, let's put it this way. Logging on and actually playing the game once you were actually in the game. The world was well done. The characters were, were fun. The, the characters even had dialogue uh, on the ship while the, while the game is loading mm-hmm. into the actual match. Um, uh, before you even get into a match, you can, you can't directly choose what you do is you kind of put, you have the options for all, uh, there are four classes, uh, and, and a monster and then the monster and you get to pick between, uh, basically the numbers one through five and organize which one you most likely want to play to least likely want to play. And then it tries to pair you up with 
people that are looking for yeah, those the it's one of the I, I guess the pairing system for that was kind of odd that that was one of the first things that struck me as odd was oh okay i i i guess i'll put trapper as one or assault as first i, I don't really know what any of these mean yet but yeah, i'll see what happens and uh so let's just say you pick assault first and you get put on a team and you're the assault uh, and you get paired with, you're in a lobby with five people. Uh, and then after you, you, you do the match and the match is, the match is the first ranged from about half an hour to 45 minutes. I'd say half an hour, 45 minutes. And it, it, it was enjoyable. I, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, I, I think most of us were stumbling around, uh, like, you know, like babies at a playground. Uh, kind of figuring out where what everything was, but uh, I understood the basic premise of what they were going for, and I felt like they achieved that goal. When we got into the, uh, uh, flying through the world was fun and enjoyable. Traversing was fun and enjoyable. When we got to the actual monster fights, they were enjoyable. Tracking the monster, you know, fight, to, to fighting the monster, to getting to the end sequence, all enjoyable. Um, that was like day one experience. Um, when you got down to like day 45, that's when you started really noticing how the game had gone from this really buffed up, you know, uh, uh, again, I think they achieved their goal and then tried to milk out so much more before the rest of its audience could fully, um, get into it or even grow. Uh, it, 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 they, they basically overwatered the plant. If I could, if I could make an analogy there. Um, because by, by the, I think the second or third week, they were already talking about DLC and new characters and new skin packs mm-hmm. and a new monster that's coming. And there are, uh, let me think, five to other, uh, 15, uh, 15 characters in the game, uh, in the launch game. And each of those 15 care, um, you only get five. You get one monster, one trap, uh, one trapper, one assault, one support, and one medic. And as you level up each one, you unlock the next, the, you unlock the next medic or the next trapper or the next monster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to basically achieve goals to get like that. So. People weren't even done unlocking all the others, all the stuff in the, in the, in the base game before they were already trying to tell us, oh, there's more coming. So, and I think a lot of us, I mean, a lot of people that really got, got into it were like, oh, sweet, I just dropped $60. I get to unlock all this stuff. Sweet. Now they're, now they're giving me more. Yeah, that's awesome. So we all supported that. And then only to realize that it was locked behind a paywall. Mm-hmm. So was there any content that came after launch that was free or was it all behind DLC and microtransactions? Okay, I'd probably say like five to six months down the road, Mm -hmm. they added community challenges that gave free skins. Um, Like I said, there, there, there was... There was a decent amount of content starting out. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, there, there are 15 characters starting out, which you do have to unlock. You do have to unlock the other ones, which means you, basically they basically force you to play certain classes before you can unlock the next one, before you have choices. So, but any, almost any other DLC, um, all the DLCs were, were, were pay, were pay to play. Um, play to unlock the characters. Now, the, a weird thing could happen, which is really odd, and it happened before the DLC, and it happened with the DLC. If somebody was in a... Ma- if, if you logged in, and somebody had been playing a character uh, that, that you didn't own, and for some reason they left, they left or got booted or just quit the game, that character is still in that match. So whoever got loaded into that game mm-hmm. to keep to keep the game going got to play that character. That's actually how I got a chance to play some characters that I I didn't even own was through that that system only. But that was 
I kind of felt like that was a, oh, it was so random and rare. It was one of those uh, that had to happen specifically. Somebody had to have bought that character and then decided to not play that character or got kicked out for whatever, whatever reason the universe only knows. And then you had to be the lucky one to get in there to play, to, to get a chance to play that character, which it's one of those, how are you going to sell something to somebody if they don't even know if they want it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I felt like that, that really took advantage of the player base. Mm. And it's kind of interesting about, so the game was launched at $60, right? That was full retail yep. at the time? Full retail price. Okay. I think I can sort of see where some of these issues came from. Now, the game, now the big multiplayer game I play, for those of you who you should know this by now, will be, of course, Payday 2. And that was launched at $30 instead of a $60, you know, full retail. And both games went for that kind of long-term game development. And it's one of the things that we're seeing a lot out of a lot more studios to try, again, long-term game development when it works, it it's a win-win for everyone. The developer and the publishers get a game that they know will still earn them money months and even years down the road. And as you were just talking about, James, for the fans, it's like, oh my god, I bought the game, now I get all of this on top of it? So it's like, you know, where do I sign up? Yeah. But it is such a careful tightrope to walk especially for something like evolve like when you're just a brand new game out of the gates like that yeah you gotta be really careful what your message that you're setting in terms of your monetization model and your structure payday at least had the advantage of already having the first game out so we kind of knew what they were going for yeah. now i guess one question i want to ask during like the time that you played evolve did they release, like, anything, I guess, like, game-changing? Like, new modes, new maps, stuff like that? No. Mm. So, during, like, the time... <laughs> yeah. That, yep. I, I, I almost feel like I want to elaborate on that, but there... No. I mean, that are you talking about anything that wasn't DLC? Yeah, like, I'm talking, like, new Just systems or new maps or something like that. Nope. Really? If you wanted something new other than the base game, you had to buy the DLC. Mm. I I think that's definitely painting a picture of what happened with Evolve. At least with Payday 2, they have added in, like to its credit, Overkill has added in game-changing elements to the game where the last... I think we're going on two, maybe three years. I always get these get this confused with the first time. I think it's been two years. But they have made system-wide changes to Payday 2, and those have been free for excuse me, free for everyone. Like when they add in the prestige system, or they rebalance all the skill trees, that stuff has always been free, you know, you don't have to spend one set on it. And the yeah. DLC has been it has come fast and loose. But it's been kept to new guns, heists, and characters. Yeah. And I think you also said another really good point that there was no way to really, I guess, quote unquote, try this stuff out unless you got luck and you entered someone else's match, right? Very much so. And that, that meant for new hunters and new monsters. Okay. okay. It, but either or. Yeah. So with uh, Payday 2, what they did was, obviously you can't play a new character or use the DLC weapons, but with any of like, the new heists, you can join someone's game and you'll get access to that and you can play any of the heists without spending money. And I think, again, that kind of helped out. Now, um, talking about what Payday 2 did mess up on with the um, microtransactions, that's a topic onto itself. We won't focus on that. But it is interesting to hear how Payday 2's first six months really differed from Evolve's like first six or seven months. Now, with Evolve, I know from hearing about like didn't it have like a huge season pass as well. Yes, yes, it did. It did have a hu- it did have a season pass, um, and I think that was like another twenty. I think it was twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. I think it was a twenty dollar add on. Um, like I, I, and that was something that like it, it, it felt like it was just, it kept asking for money mm. 
and didn't have the the backing for it. Where it was like, why should you spend this money? You, you, you exactly. People were like, well, okay, you're you're promising us, and they did say, oh, we're going to release. There's more, mo-. And, and that that was something that that really got me was that they were going right from the beginning, even before the game was out. They said, like, they had already released all the three main, the three uh, launch monsters, and they were already talking about the fourth monster. Mm -hmm. So everybody's thinking, before the game was even out, oh, I'm paying $60, and I'm going to get four monsters. Nope, nope, it was, Mm -hmm. you pay $60, get three, and then if you didn't buy, the spend the extra $20... You're, then you're, yeah, spend, you, don't get season, you don't get the fourth monster. Mm-hmm. You had to buy, or you could buy the monster flat out. Okay, man, I think that's a another good nail in the coffin. Then for the retail version of Evolve, is that why should someone spend sixty dollars on the game? Yeah, we can draw obvious parallels to Overwatch and what Blizzard did right. They could have released Overwatch as a free to play game, and I'm sure everyone would fall in love with it just the same. But instead, they basically said, you buy this game retail, you know, anything they add, um, you know, unless they decide to do, like, expansion level stuff at some point, is included in that $50. I think it would have hurt Blizzard a lot more. uh, uh, Looking at it now, it would have hurt Blizzard. uh, Just mechanically, it would have hurt them if they were free to play. Because that's not not how the game... The game is meant to have all those heroes available for everybody... At once, it, it, they. I don't think they could go to. I don't even think they could go to free to play. Definitely. Not only Definitely. Don't think it's in Blizzard's blood. Uh, if it eh. could have been redesigned, like if it was designed from the start to be free to play, then yeah. it. I think it could have worked. But this was definitely a game that was designed, as you just said, James, to have everyone included. Like the game again was balanced with this retail package, and I think the consumers really respond to the fact that they knew what they were getting with the game. It wasn't like Hearthstone, where it is free-to-play, and you have the monetization model, you know, attached to it. With Overwatch, I spend 50 or $60 or whatever it is now. Probably won't go down below $50 for a very long time, but everything they add in, I'm going to get. So there is that long-term value. It's the same thing we talked about with Payday 2 and what was originally promised with Evolve. So whenever Blizzard is – and as another thing, they just add in competitive, I think, matchmaking last month to Overwatch. Yes. And again well, – yep. the they, they continue to update and reward yeah. – they're, they're people who have bought the game. Full price. Like, if I can even go back a little bit further, Mass Effect, um, the, the Mass Effect series, uh, more specifically, Mass Effect 3. Now, I mean, we can say what we want about the ending story. But that's mm-hmm. not what I'm going to talk about. Um, the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, which, uh, by the way, was it was phenomenal. I thought, Mass, I thought Bio, Bioware did a phenomenal job on the Mass Effect 3 uh, on the Mass Effect 3 um, uh, uh, multiplayer system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and every single update for the multiplayer system was free. Even though the multiplayer system was it was an add-on. It was a that you didn't you weren't playing that Mass Effect 3 because of because it had multiplayer. You played it for the the, the to complete the single player campaign that you've been doing for the last two. And yet the third the, the multiplayer system was phenomenal and they're like hey you guys like it we're gonna keep updating it fix bugs and give you more characters oh, well how much well no no free just download it but mm-hmm. like it, to me it showed me that 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 okay yes it can be done and when you have people like that i, I and just you are it's gonna increase the player basis by so much it really will, and and that's going to grow. Your number is going to grow, so that when you go, hey, Mass Effect Andromeda is out. Not only do you have the hard, the die hard, hardcore um, uh, single player fans where we're like, oh, of course they're going to get the next Mass Effect because they always were. You now have this whole new group of people who strictly played the multiplayer campaign and and got great service out of it. And are going to come back to Andromeda to see what what Bioware is going to do for them there. 
hmm. and we'll give you sixty dollars and won't mind paying an extra twenty for for the end for the DLC because you've already shown that you lo- that you are giving back to the people that are supporting you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and again, like with over, I mean, another example from Blizzard be Diablo three and the work they've done altering that game and growing it. Same thing with Payday two. If you look at Payday two now, compare what it was as launch completely different experience and again that's because they kept supporting the game now obviously there was people interested in the game but it's that positive feedback loop the more you support your audience the more they're going to support you yep. and uh, it worked for overkill it worked for blizzard but it didn't work for turtle rock with evolve and i, I think it's because they went straight they i felt like they they bypass the fans and went straight for content Mm -hmm. and because they didn't it's one of those they they didn't invest in their fan base Mm -hmm. they didn't and one of the biggest issues later on was that because they uh isolated a lot of their fan base and kind of uh alienated some of them with charging dlc for people that had already bought the game um when people went to play matches, you couldn't find anybody. The ma- matchmaking system took, like, you were waiting. We, I had a, I had a couple of matches where I was even with a group of three people, and it took us about maybe twenty, twenty-five minutes to find, to find someone a, a full, a full round of people. And then they, add, oh, they, oh, they did add something. They, they started adding ranking systems to try to make things it was towards the end towards the end like towards the uh the later life of evolve where they added a ranking system where uh but the ranking system was based off of win uh was based off of wins well it's supposed to be based off of skill how well you did in certain matches um but that was tied to wins and losses which could be affected by anything. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. especially if you're putting a bunch of low-ranking people together, and then they then they would put, like, a higher-ranking monster. So, like, you're gonna lose. These people don't know what they're doing. And the game also really did hinge that because it's a 4v1, if one person doesn't know what they're doing, it can ruin the experience for, for, for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, yeah man. Yep. That's been one of the um, worries about one of the challenges of Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 is you have eight people playing the game. So they had a similar problem with trying to get eight people together. Obviously, the more people you try to get together for a single time, the harder it really gets. Yeah. And with like Left 4 Dead and trying to get eight people together, like with Evolve, when you have competitive matchmaking thrown on top of that, that just adds you know a whole nother wrinkle to try and get these things to work. And one of the problems with long-term development is that you are pretty much living or dying based on your community. I think I saw at one point they had like maybe less than like 800 concurrent players on at one time. Yeah. Worldwide. That is, you know, dismal at best for any right. game. Now, we've talked about the game during its retail period, then... As for those of you who missed the story, game has been slowly dying a very long and painful death over the last year or so. And then over like the last few weeks, all of a sudden the game was pulled off of Steam and now Evolve Stage 2 is up. And this is the free-to-play version of the game. So what they've done, I think right now you can play it. It's still, I think, considered in beta. They still haven't like added in everything from the original. But they like this is sort of what we were talking about a few minutes ago with like Overwatch and how in a completely different design it could have been transitioned to free to play. So what Turtle Lock did was basically take the entire game apart and essentially try to retrofit into a free to play model. And it's done a few very interesting things. I haven't had a chance to load it up yet. But there have been talks that they've, I think they've had a new record for most people playing the game. Yes. Yes, they did. They, uh, they've had some, uh, a really high, really, it's at really high numbers right now. 
as like on P- on PC. I- I've been I've been tracking it so far. So mm-hmm. and it's again it's brought a lot of people to playing it, but they've also completely restructure progression they've completely restructured the payment models and stuff like that have you had a chance to look at it since it went free to play uh yes uh right now they are currently working on the business model Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. they're currently working on the business model but i think there are it's gonna be like some sort of like you know hunting coins or whatever um but you are uh and you gain those um as you play the game and you're you're gaining those kind of coins um mm-hmm. you are getting those coins uh for wins and losses and then you can save those up to purchase um to purchase either hunters monsters or um or uh, uh buffs or uh, uh they're not called buffs they're called something else like um just uh things that make your hunter stronger uh that power up your hunter uh and um uh i think they're going to be having a, a a uh, weekly uh, s- recycle for for uh, different hunters from di- uh, different hunters from di- different uh, uh, different classes every every uh, week. So mm-hmm. they'll get a different assault, a different medic, a-, a different trapper each week, and stuff like that. So that'll all be those will be free to play, uh, and then whatever ones you've unlocked so far. I know another part that has caused some issues and some pushback from the fans would be their quote unquote founder status. And what this is is if you own the re- or if you own or if you're like me and bought a retail copy of Evolve, mm-hmm. the key basically gives you founders status which not only gives you a lot of in game currency, but you unlocked all the hunters and monsters for free that came with the original purchase. And it's kind of causing people to debate, you know, like they really that it's not really like enough for the people who spent sixty plus dollars on this game. So, what do you think about like sort of how they're trying to handle the people who did originally support the game? Well, I, I know I've also been hearing reports that some of the people have not been getting those things have not been unlocked um, for them, and they purchased the game. Now, I, I think something like that is more. I think that's just more uh, problem in the coding or a problem with their new their new system, and that'll probably be refunded to those people at the time mm-hmm. but um i whenever a game goes free to play you're gonna have the people that bought it when it first came out and they're gonna grumble they have to grumble they paid money for something that now is accessible to everybody um now i do think the uh, the, re- the reward for it should be I mean, again, the reward for it is going to be they're going to get all the things that they hopefully paid for and then and then to be caught up for uh, towards the other t- t- towards the other people. But the, but the the important thing, I don't again, I think uh, we had another we had the uh, other guy on here uh, or the last podcast we just had. Uh, and uh, what he said was really true is that half of the people are going to get mad at the game and play it and the other half aren't going to be that mad because regardless this new model is going to bring more people back to the franchise mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. if you were one of those uh, die hard people that really love the franchise regardless if you spend $60 or $80 for everything uh, you're going to be happy that you can actually play the game with other because there's other people on instead of being in a waiting list for like two hours uh, you know what I mean? It's I think I think you're going to get more. I think those people that that spent the money are are more disheartened by its original release than they will be from what they what they get rewarded with for its re-release. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, here is a question that I want to ask you, James. And I think I may know the answer, know what you're going to say, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. Obviously, we've talked about Evolve, we've talked about um, over, uh, Payday 2, Overwatch. I mean, we can even throw in Killing Floor 2, who's been also having trouble with, you know, trying to appease fans while going this microtransaction or DLC route. But one game that has basically went through this with flying colors, I think, has been Team Fortress 2. And Team Fortress 2 really was... Um, patient zero in a sense for a lot we've seen today 
they're the ones who went from a retail model, full retail, well, I should, that's actually half a lie, they went orange box, which I think was $30, and then they went to microtransactions, and then to free to play, and so far, like, I have, I don't think I've ever heard someone, you know, flat out condemn Valve for what happened to Team Fortress 2. It's been like the only game so far that has really just kept itself going, and not only that, but kept itself positive throughout its entire transition. So my question for you is, like, in your opinion, like, as someone who plays these games and seen, you know, sort of when it goes wrong, when it goes right, what do you think Valve has done to, you know, avoid this? Like, what's their secret sauce, in a manner of speaking? Um... I played. I, I did. I actually did play Team Fortress Two as well um, uh, for a bit, and I, I gotta say the 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 fans, your your customers will. And, okay, and it's one of those. Well, how did they get the fans to, to mm-hmm. do that? By by talking with them, by listening to them. When the fans say there's a problem here, they fix it. When the fans when when they give things to to the, also the, the, there's also even with team fortress there was there were things to work for that you got automatic it's one of those things it, it, it's it's it sounds small but if there is a penguin hat in team fortress 2 that you can get on your own you best believe there are going to be people that are willing to pay for it mm-hmm. so and I think a lot, some, de- not to say a lot, I can't even say that, but I think some developers miss the point of the fact that, like, a lot of the people that are playing games, like, like, that, that we people that grew, that grew up with the console, and, like, the old school consoles and stuff, when you bought a game, everything was compiled into that game. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. unlocking things was, bi- I mean, Think of Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There were, uh, what, like, some 40, 50 characters in that game? And you had to unlock every single one of them, which gave the game ridiculous replayability. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that, like, you know, so that when somebody else bought the game, they had to, they had to unlock everybody in it, which kept the game going. Can you even Im- like when you when you think about it, you want to people want to go. Well, that could never happen today because of D because of DLC. Wrong. It's not that that could never happen today. And in fact, I think Valve has proven that with Team Fortress with Team Fortress Two. But one of the biggest things that they've proven is that just because we have um, the way you do it is like Marvel vs. Capcom. You have the stuff already in the game that st- uh, certain stuff in the game that people can play and unlock and feel like they achieved something for nothing. Now, obviously, they either paid to play the game or even I think what Team Fortress 2 is now free to play. Yes. But the more they play, they're being rewarded for that mm-hmm. play, which you could go into a philosophical argument that that's what most video games are or <laughs> are gigantic reward systems. But. When it, when a player feels rewarded for playing, they're not gonna um, it, it, you're gonna have anybody that's willing to be rewarded. You're gonna have the other side of people who are gonna be willing to pay for that reward to get it. And uh, money is the equivalency of work. Work is money. Mm-hmm. So, and in video game industry, you're either gonna work to unlock something. Or you're going to pay to unlock something. Either way, you're going to get that. Yeah. And that's where you grow. I think, honestly, that's what Valve did. They said, hey, there's a bunch of stuff to unlock. It's there. Play the game. Have fun. Oh, by the way, after two a, a month or two of playing the game, hey, if you want to buy some cool things, we have that too. And that's where they kind of got these people where they were like, oh, man, I've been playing Team Fortress. I love the game. I unlock this, this and this and this. Oh, yeah. Well, they also have this. Oh, wow. Cool. Hey, I have an extra five bucks lying around and I'm 
pretty dedicated to the fan base. Look at Blizzard. Blizzard did the exact same thing with um a Hearthstone. Mm-hmm. Can you uh, can you get all the characters? The- uh, let's talk about the first series of Hearthstone, the first expansion, uh, not even the first expansion, the vanilla, uh, the vanilla set of cards. Can you get all those cards on your own? Yeah, you don't have to spend a dime. Yet they continue to make money because there's people out there that go, oh, I got this card, I got this card, but I need two more. And I'll buy a couple of packs. Warframe, one of the greatest free-to-play games out there. Graphics gorgeous. Their business model is amazing. And they said, hey, all the, almost everything in this game you can get for free, for free through hard work of just playing our game. Mm-hmm. And if you want to give us money, here you go. Yeah. And you know what I mean? But where Evolve failed is that Evolve went, hey, here's this awesome game that you have to give us money for. Cool. And if you want more, you have to give us more money. There's no, um, there's no time equivalent. I think is the big point, and that is pretty much Valve's big mo or their big uh, stamp on Team Fortress Two. And they've had presentations and talks about this. As you you were just saying, James, people put a value to time and they put a value to money. For different people, that those two ratios are skewed. Someone with tons of money, they want everything. They're not going to spend like five, six hours unlocking someone. They can just give five bucks. Yes. But if you're playing, but if money is tight and you still want to have an enjoyable experience, then you're willing to wait and, you know, get the stuff unlocked. And then when you make that big purchase of, you know, a $3 or $5 skin or whatever, yeah. it's going to be worth more to you since you put more value on that, on the, I'm sorry, you put more value on the time. And so now when you do decide to spend money, it's going to be that much more important to you. And it's all about managing the different expectations of the consumer. And that, I think, is the point that Valve has learned. It's what Blizzard has definitely known about for a very long time. And we could even argue that Overkill has done that to some extent with Payday 2. Again, not everything with Payday 2 is, you know, free, but... There's still plenty of value if you don't spend, you know, one cent on that game. I think that is kind of the, um, the big flag or the big moment or I can't think of the, exp- I can't think of the metaphor I want to use, but it's the big reason I think that a lot of free to play games have had trouble or the ones that have not managed to capture their fan bases. There needs to be, a value or a hook to play in the game that doesn't involve money. There has to be a time equivalent or something along those lines. Yep. Um, with Killing Floor 2, I know they recently, or over like the last year, they've added in their own you know crate and skin system, but I don't think there's a time equivalent. You can only get it by spending you know, like $2 or $3 per key. So... Oh, wow. While the game has value, oh, I forgot, you do have to spend money on the game. And I think that's another major point, is free-to-play versus retail. When you're dropping $60 on a game, you're not expecting to be nickel and dime for additional content afterwards. Yes, yes. Um, Now, I think the only ones who can somewhat get away with would be like the Call of Duty model. But when they're issuing this content, it's usually in like major packs and stuff like that. Like they don't release like little like a dollar, two dollars here. They'll release you know, like a ten dollar map pack or something along those lines. And, and Call of Duty is a really it is also a complete game yeah. too. You but when you talk about a retail game, you also have to understand what is all coming in the game yeah. itself. One of the biggest problems for o- for uh, not oh, sorry, Evolve. I almost watch uh, for Evolve is the fact that they're just the the amount of content. And gameplay for the price, and then on top of it, the nickel and diming behind mm-hmm. all that was way too much. Yeah. Versus, like, and here's something like my biggest uh, question it originally was as a fan of, of, of Evolve, I looked at a game like Overwatch and go, okay, so I get one mode and I have to play this mode over and over again, and I'm paying $60 for it. Um, more and the back of my mind goes no you're paying $30 for 
for Overwatch, you're paying another thirty dollars for Blizzard. Mm-hmm. It's like it, it's lit- it, it literally is branding. Do you get the cereal in a bag for cheaper, or do you get the brand name bag? Mm-hmm. And like, I kind of felt like they did that with over. Uh, maybe I'm one of the few people out there that I'm not giving Overwatch a hundred percent free pass. They cheaped out on everybody too. They gave you half of a game. It's only a multiplayer game. It is, mm-hmm. and you will play through every single character at least once within t- a two hour period, and you will have seen all of the game modes at least once in a two hour in, in a two hour period. Mm-hmm. So I, I cannot crucify a game like Evolve while praise a game like Evolve, uh, praise a game like uh, Overwatch, you know, without saying something towards that matter. Yeah. Now, a big difference is I will give I will give Blizzard the quality aspect of it. As much as I love Evolve, you're not going to beat Blizzard. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, Blizzard has real, really good, and by quality, I, I, what what do I even mean by that? Graphic wise, good. Character design, good. But Evolve the had, polish, has, I think, is another good part of Blizzard. But but even even more, to tell you the truth, you're almost paying another ten dollars for marketing, <laughs> which Evolve's marketing was kind of weird and eh, at best. But you're not going to beat Blizzard. I, it's almost like the Blizzard marketing budget is another reason why you had to pay sixty dollars for that game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it, it evolved in half, and that's why I give Evolve a little bit more of a free pass, a little bit more because it's a small, a smaller studio compared to Blizzard. Um, but I do, where I don't fall is that they didn't take care of their bases. They didn't mm-hmm. take care of the people who really love the game. And they nickeled and dimed the crap out of them. And yeah. that's her. Blizzard was like, hey, you can get everything. Just keep playing our game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the fact that Blizzard has already, in the span of two months, Blizzard has already added in free content to Overwatch. Yep. Yeah. And Evolve, as you said, like in the time that you spent playing, they rarely, if anything, came that was completely free. And nope. this sort of reminds me, like a few months ago, we had a discussion on Street Fighter V. And how the game did really terribly in terms of consumer expectation and the overall market compared to their hardcore fans. And I think it's the same thing that when you're ask, when you're charging money to even get your foot in the door, people expect things to be done. It's like opening up a restaurant and walking and find that half the place is still being constructed. Yes. No one wants to be no one of your fan base or your market is going to want to be in something that's only half done. Now, your hardcore fan, you know, the hardcore base, yeah, they're going to love it because they're the ones who are going to play this game constantly. But as we said back then, I think what we were sort of talking about tonight is that if you want your game to last long term, you have to cultivate the fans. Obviously, I mean, going back to Team Fortress... <laughs> Valve could have made so much more money by monetizing more elements of the game out. They could have mm-hmm. done that easily, but they went for long-term appeal versus short-term gain. And mm-hmm. I think the proof is in the pudding with them, and I think Overwatch with Blizzard will probably be the same thing. I'm sure we're going to still be hearing about free content to Overwatch for the next few months, maybe even to, into 2017 as well. Oh, definitely. Will they eventually have like additional purchases? I'm gonna say yes. If the game continues to do well, I'm sure they're thinking of expansions or you know Diablo three Reaper of Souls you know size content at some point. But mm-hmm. the point is that when you're putting down your sixty dollars, you're going to get all this plus whatever else they're going to have that comes out. While Evolve and even like Street Fighter Five. They basically release a game saying, oh, we're going to have all this great stuff, but it's not coming yet, and you may have to spend more money on it. Yeah, and hearing that is is just a kick in the, it's a kick in, a kick in the, in the, in the pants, because yeah. yeah. you're like, I just, I just spent money. Like, and you got to understand that the majority of people, uh, of gamers out there, they're, they're not like, oh man, I just have $190 yeah. that I'm all yeah. going to spend on Overwatch. No, they're like, 
I have 60 bucks that I got paid this month and I also got rent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so yeah. I'm going to buy a game and this game's probably going to have to last me for a good long while until I, you know what I mean? So trying to, again, yeah, you're, you're not going to see, you're not going to see a lot of people happy about that stuff. Although I think the free to play for them, uh, for Evolve is going to go good. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's already getting people, it, it's washing away some of the bad taste of before it's uh, getting people playing the game again. And I, I can't stress that enough. When you actually played the game, and there was some balancing stuff, but any game has that. But it was fun. It was a fun <laughs> game. It was an enjoyable game. It, it was a beautiful world to be in, uh, especially especially if you had friends. If you had if you were on a mic uh, and you had a good and you had friends, you were having a blast. Playing the game. And that's what happened with me and my friends with Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. We spent, I think, collectively almost around like 2,000 hours playing that game. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing pe developers want to hear about their games. But again, you need everything to work properly. I bet if, mm -hmm. like with Left 4 Dead, I would love for them to continue working on something like that. Or with Valve these days, I know there's been quote-unquote rumors that there's a Left 4 Dead 3 announcement coming soon. Yeah, I did hear something about that. And I'm curious, I'm actually, if that is the case, and this will probably take us into the end of the cast, but I'm really interested to see if there is going to be a Left 4 Dead 3, if Valve will attempt a long-term development like they're doing with Team Fortress or Dota 2, or even with Counter-Strike Go. Because every one of Valve's games, or at least their biggest name games, have mm -hmm. been becoming these, you know, massive monoliths of their company. Again, like, they just had another, I think, CSGO tournament a few month a few weeks ago, by the time this recording's up. I know the big Dota 2 tournament happened as well. And, I mean, each one of their games, similar to Blizzard, is like a just a gigantic pillar for their companies. So, uh -huh. so I'm curious to see what that's going to mean. Now, yeah. um, I guess to wrap up this cast and to finish talking about Evolve, I agree with you, James, regarding I think the free-to-play is going to be a smart move for them. I think it it's already proving it. Now, the question is whether or not they can take this and run with it. I think that's going to be the big test to see – if all those people are going to want to keep playing Evolve, and more importantly, if their new business model will work, I, I think I think it will. I, then again, I'm I'm I, I'm 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 optimistic, and maybe I'm optimistic because I was uh, I was a fan, um, but uh, I I it's not without data showing, and they're they are growing. They're getting they're they're getting uh, getting bigger and. Again, uh, and that's on PC, and they only they only launched free to play on PC so far. So when it, I think it's the question for me. The question is going to be: Will they be able to catch this revival with stage two on the console market? Mm -hmm. And I think if they hit the console market, you're gonna see you're, you're gonna see, you're, you're go they're gonna do it right. This, I think they're gonna do it right this time. I, I really hope they they've learned from their mistakes and from from the PC release it looks like they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think the console market will. I think, as you said, it's going to be a real telling piece because again, console gamers aren't used to the free to play market. As we just said a few minutes ago, most console gamers and even most of the general market, it's not they're used to basically spending sixty dollars and then that's it. That's their game for the next month or two. Mm -hmm. But the idea of free-to-play is that you play this game as long as you want, and then more content comes, which means more money spent. And I think it's also – this is probably too big, especially since we're coming to the end of this cast. But as one final point I just want to leave for everyone to think about, it's kind of interesting to talk about these action or competitive slash cooperative games – going for like the same kind of long-term MMO development that the MMO genre was known for throughout the thousands. And a lot of the MMOs then, the ones that couldn't succeed with the traditional subscription model, went free-to-play. 
and they manage to not only bounce back, but thrive. Stuff like DC Universe Online, Lord of the Rings Online. And yeah. it's kind of just like a really weird parallel to see how this genre, or these genres in particular, are now trying to copy or follow in that same footsteps. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, definitely. But I think it's time to wrap things up. As I said at the start, this is a special Monday edition of the Perceptive Podcast. And I hope this is a this little teaser will sort of uh, get your interest peaked for what we could do if we can start getting those Patreon goals going. And again, if we can hit at least – goal number one is really what at least I need in order to keep going – Goal number two will help out tremendously, and three would be enough that I am pretty much secure, and we can really take game wisdom further than we could ever do before. So, if you enjoyed this special Monday cast, and would like to see more, or even look into getting a digital CD of the month's cast, and this one will be included on that, be sure to check out the Patreon campaign. Again, you can find the link on the front page by clicking the Patreon banner, or by searching for Game Wisdom on Patreon.com. As I said at the start, all donations will be greatly appreciated, and they'll all help towards building Game Wisdom up and making it even better. So, um, with that said, James, it was a pleasure talking to you tonight. No, we haven't, I think, really had a chance to just have a cast, just the two of us. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, this was a lot of fun, actually. It was, it was cool to kind of get, to get getting a chance to talk about games from the two of us yeah. yeah and like i said if we can hit that funding we can do a lot more of these as well i'm sure you would enjoy doing more of these uh duo casts as well oh definitely yes awesome so for those of you listening thanks so much for tuning in besides a patreon as always if you'd like to submit a guest piece to the site or be a future podcast guest you can find information and links under submissions wanted if you are a developer, student, enthusiast, whatever, as long as you're interested in talking about game design with us, we'd love to have you on. Be sure to follow Game Wisdom on Twitch and Twitter under GW Bicer. And be sure to check out all the video content that goes up daily on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel, including Let's Plays, video examinations, and more. So, with all that said, thanks so much for tuning in to this special Monday edition of the Perceptive Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this little teaser. We will talk to you then this Friday with the actual week's cast. Have a great rest of the week, and we will talk to you then. Take care.